Hello YouTube, I am Dr. Robiul. I work as a lecturer of pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students. Hope someone finds this helpful. Okay, now today's topic is cell injury. In this video, we will try to define cell injury, then discuss the common causes of cell injury and since hypoxia is an important cause of cell injury so we will briefly discuss on hypoxia and then we will discuss the mechanism of cell injury since cell injury is a long topic so i will make this video part by part so this is part one and in the part two that i will hopefully upload in a week we will discuss about irreversible cell injury that will include necrosis and apoptosis okay so let's begin first question what is cell injury to understand cell injury first you have to know another term that is cellular adaptation because cell injury occurs when cellular adaptation is not possible or that is failing okay so what is cellular adaptation always remember the cells of our body they have the power they have a capacity to um, respond to stressful condition by changing themselves okay so that is known as cellular adaptation cellular adaptation is a reversible change in either the size of the cell the number of the cell the phenotype or function of the cell in response to change in environment okay so that is cellular adaptation change in the size number phenotype or function of a cell in response to change in an environment but there are some conditions when the stressful condition is so severe that the cells cannot undergo adaptation that is the time when the cells will get injured okay so now let's uh, look at the definition of cell injury so as you can see i have written in the board cell injury results when cells are stressed so severely that they are no longer able to adapt or when cells are exposed to inherently damaging agent or suffering from intrinsic abnormality okay so that is the definition of cell injury i am repeating the definition again cell injury results when cells are stressed so severely that they no longer able to adapt or when cells are exposed to inherently damaging agent or suffering from intrinsic abnormality okay so now that we have cleared the definition of cell injury now uh, we will discuss what are the common causes of cell injury so as you can see i have written a lot of causes the first cause is hypoxia okay so what is hypoxia hypoxia means lack or reduced amount of oxygen in the tissue and we will discuss that um, after a while the second cause is physical agent physical agents can cause cell injury say for example any mechanical trauma extreme heat or extreme cold that is burn as well as deep cold both can cause cell injury other physical agent includes atmospheric pressure radiation even electricity all these physical agents can cause cell injury the third cause of cell injury was different chemical agents now you will see in your textbook that um, there is a line that saying that if you want to list all the chemicals that can cause cell injury the list will be limitless you know because any chemical substance in abnormal amount can cause cell injury say for example the glucose you know we are always um, thinking about the importance of glucose you know that's the only food for our brain cells remember 
But do you know that a high dose of glucose is toxic and that can cause cell injury? Similarly, high dose of salt is also toxic. And if we uh, mention different types of poisons, surely they can cause cell injury. For example, cyanide, arsenic, all can cause cell injury. So the list of chemical agent is actually limitless. Okay. The next cause of cell injury was by some infection. It can be viral, bacterial, protozoal, parasite, etc. Okay. The next point was immunological cause. Now remember, immune system is very important for our body. It protects us from different harmful endogenous as well as exogenous agents. You know, but the problem is sometimes the immune system finds our own cells as enemies and they start to um, produce some immune response against our own cell and that is a term known as autoimmunity and um, that can cause cell injury. Okay, the next point was nutritional imbalance. Note that I have said nutritional imbalance. I did not say malnutrition. The reason is both undernutrition as well as overnutrition can cause cell injury. You know, in developing country, malnutrition is the important cause of cell injury. You know, and in the developed country, in the Western country, they are having overnutrition and that can also cause cell injury. So always keep that in your mind that the term will be nutritional imbalance, not malnutrition, because overnutrition can also cause cell injury. The last cause of cell injury, as written here, you can see is genetic problem. Okay, and remember, genetic is a vast topic, so I will just give you some example say for example a patient of down syndrome you know there is a trisomy 21 the chromosome number 21 is 3 in number instead of 2 in that patient's cells you know so um, that will cause different types of problem as well as cell injury and if I give you another example of genetic cause of cell injury um, think of an enzyme that got mutated and as a result of mutation that enzyme cannot function properly and as a result of that improper function the cell cannot function properly and getting damaged okay so that is another example of cell injury okay so now that we have discussed the definition and the causes of cell injury now we will focus on this point that was hypoxia so what does hypoxia mean hypoxia means reduced amount of oxygen in the tissue okay and always remember there are three causes of hypoxia they are ischemia there is another term hypoxemia that I will discuss after a while so the first cause of hypoxia is ischemia the second cause is hypoxemia and the third cause is decreased oxygen carrying capacity of the blood now don't get scared I will discuss all these things one by one okay so the first cause of hypoxia is ischemia so what do we mean by ischemia ischemia means reduced blood flow it can be arterial blood flow or it can be venous blood flow both can cause ischemia let me give you some example say for example a patient developed coronary atherosclerosis that means atherosclerosis of his coronary artery the artery that supplies to the muscles of the heart okay then what will happen atherosclerosis will uh, make the lumen of the coronary blood vessel narrow so now there will be reduced arterial blood flow through that coronary artery and that will result in something called ischemia so that is easy to understand but now you may be asking then why does 
decreased venous blood flow can cause um, hypoxia. To explain that, I have to draw an image. Okay, so if you recall your anatomy or physiology lectures, you know how blood flows. You know, if I draw a simple diagram, you will see. Say, for example, this is an artery, then blood goes from artery to capillary, right? And then from capillary, what happens? Here, gas exchange occurs, nutrient exchange occurs, and then the products of metabolism and other toxic substances that are not needed for that cell they go through the venous system okay so this one is the artery i'm drawing a this is the capillary and this is the vein okay so why would we have ischemia when there is decreased um, venous outflow the thing is if we decrease the blood flow here that blood will accumulate here and that will result in decrease of the arterial flow as well so the point i'm trying to make here is if someone has reduced venous blood flow fresh blood will not come to those area and that will also result in ischemia okay so that is about ischemia the second cause of hypoxia was hypoxemia okay now at the end we have mia that means here hypoxemia means reduced amount of oxygen in the blood okay so uh, what is that to understand hypoxemia we have to know how blood uh, is oxygenated okay so let's draw another simple diagram say for example I am drawing the lungs okay this is one lung these are the respiratory trees you know and at the end of those trees we have alveoli right so what happens when we are inspiring air when uh, we are uh, taking air oxygen is entering in our lungs okay the pressure of oxygen in the inspired air is known as PiO2 okay so what happens when we are taking that air that air is coming inside our lungs and then it is going to the alveoli the pressure in the alveoli is written P big A O2 okay and from the alveoli what happens gas exchange occurs and then that oxygen can go to the blood and then that is called p small a o2 and from the blood it will go inside the rbc um, and bind with the hemoglobin and we will express that thing as sao2 okay so hypoxemia means this one this p small a o2 this one is reduced okay so that is hypoxemia and that can cause hypoxia so now you may be asking then what are the causes of hypoxemia what can result in reduced amount of p small a o2 okay the first cause of hypoxemia is decreased inspired air you know if it is very simple if we reduce this thing since this goes here and that thing goes there so if we can reduce this thing this entire thing will um, be reduced so what are the causes when we are having reduced amount of inspired air the most important cause is of course you know high altitude okay so in high altitude the amount of oxygen in the inspired air will be less than normal so as a result the entire chain 
P big A O2, P small A O2, all will be reduced. Okay, so that's one cause of hypoxemia. The second cause of hypoxemia is hypoventilation. Okay, say you are in a normal atmospheric pressure, uh, there is plenty of oxygen in the air, but you have problem in your ventilation system. Say, for example, there is some um, respiratory depression in your medulla, so you cannot uh, use your uh, respiratory system properly, so you are hypoventilating. Now, what happens when you hypoventilate? The the reason we uh, ventilate is to get oxygen in and carbon dioxide out. So when we are doing less ventilation, carbon dioxide will accumulate. Okay, and uh, as carbon dioxide will accumulate, and uh, that will also result in decreased PaO2. Okay, so that is another cause of hypoxemia. There are other causes of hypoxemia and uh, they include ventilation defect and perfusion defect. Okay, so what do you mean by a ventilation defect? Say for example, a patient um, may have respiratory distress syndrome and uh, there is a lack of surfactant in his lungs and uh, that is causing um, collapse of the distal airways. Okay, and uh, since his distal airways are collapsed, so surely he cannot do sufficient gas exchange. There is problem in his ventilation and that will result in some ventilatory defect causing hypoxemia. Okay. The next cause of hypoxemia was perfusion defect. Okay, in these cases, ventilation is okay, but the lung doesn't have sufficient blood supply. There may be area where we have plenty of gas but they cannot go into the blood vessel because there is not enough blood vessel in those areas. Okay, so that is perfusion defect. So all those things can cause hypoxemia. So I am repeating the causes of hypoxemia again. The first cause was high altitude. The second cause was hyperventilation that can be due to some um, medullary depression of the respiratory center. The third and fourth causes were ventilation defect and perfusion defect. So all those things can cause decreased amount of oxygen in the blood and that can result in hypoxia. The third cause of hypoxia was decreased oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. And I'm sure you have heard the term anemia. In anemia, we're having reduced amount of hemoglobin. And always remember, hemoglobins are important because they bind with oxygen and make something known as oxyhemoglobin. And that is how oxygen are transported inside the red blood cell. So whenever we are having problem um, with hemoglobin, say for example, the patient has anemia, then there will be reduced oxygen to the tissue. There are other causes that can um, cause um, reduced oxygen carrying capacity. Say for example, if there is um, increased breakdown of the red blood cell, you know, that can happen in some uh, hemolytic disease. That can also uh, result in um, decreased um, oxygen carrying capacity and other causes include sequestration um, of RBC in the spleen. Okay, so these are the causes of um, hypoxia and now we will discuss the mechanisms of cell injury. So what are the mechanisms of cell injury? As you can see in the bottom of the board I have uh, drawn a series of mechanism. All of these can cause cell injury. One mechanism is via ATP depletion. ATP, when ATP is less, it will cause a lot of effect, which we will discuss after a while. Another mechanism is via mitochondrial damage, which can cause leakage of some pro-apoptotic molecules. 
some molecules that promote apoptosis and that will result in cell injury and cell death. Another mechanism of cell injury is where we are having increased calcium entry and uh, that will have a lot of effect uh, by increasing mitochondrial permeability and as well as by activating certain enzymes. Another mechanism of cell injury is the reactive oxygen species. They can damage lipid, protein and DNA and cause cell injury by damaging these lipid, protein and DNA. Okay? Another way a cell injury can occur is via membrane damage and I'm sure you know our cells have a lot of membrane say for example cell membrane, lysosomal membrane, all those membranes can be damaged. There is another way cell injury can occur and that is via misfolded protein and they also uh, can promote apoptosis okay so all these are the overview of the mechanism of cell injury and now we will try to discuss some of those the most important mechanism was via ATP depletion recall that we said the commonest cause of cell injury was hypoxia in hypoxia, as there is lack of oxygen, so electron transport chain cannot function properly, so we are having reduced amount of ATP. Now what will that do? So if you look at the image I have drawn here, so when we are having reduced ATP, our body needs to generate ATP. So how will we generate ATP without oxygen? That is something known as anaerobic glycolysis okay so what will happen we will uh, produce ATP but not sufficient ATP okay the amount of ATP produced by anaerobic glycolysis is less but however there will be also some lactic acid produced in anaerobic glycolysis and that will lower the pH and that will also cause chromatin clumping Okay, so the acidic environment will cause clumping of the chromatin. The next thing that will happen when we have reduced ATP is there will be some problem in different pumps in our cell. Recall that our cell has a lot of pump to carry different types of electrolyte in and out of the cell. Say for example, sodium, potassium, ATPase pump, calcium pump. All these pumps they require energy for active transport so when we are reducing ATP those pumps will fail so what was the function of sodium potassium ATPase pump its function was to carry sodium from inside of the cell to the outside in exchange of calcium okay so that thing will now reverse so sodium will accumulate inside the cell and uh, with sodium there will accumulate water so as sodium and water begins to accumulate uh, inside the cell the cells will swell up so that will result in cell swelling and also the endoplasmic reticulum they will also begin to swell that we can say is known as endoplasmic reticulum swelling and remember when a cell is um, getting swelled uh, the microvilli on its surface will be lost say for example if this was a cell and uh, this finger like projection on the surface are known as microvilli but when we are filling this cell up uh, with water and electrolyte those things will disappear okay so that is what will happen uh, when we are having uh, reduce sodium potassium pump activity the last thing that will happen due to ATP depletion is detachment of ribosome and recall that ribosome are important for our protein synthesis so when the ribosomes are getting detached from their uh, site it will cause decreased amount of protein synthesis so this concludes the part one of the cell injury video in the second part i will continue discussion of the other mechanisms of cell injury followed by irreversible cell injury and cell death okay so that's all for today 
I hope you found this helpful. Take care. Thank you.